<coughs> Good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, February 13th uh, Senate press conference. Uh, I'm co-chairman of finance Anna McKinnon and with me this morning I'll let each uh, member introduce themselves. Lyman Hoffman, Senator from Western Alaska. I'm John Coggill, Senator from the Interior Fairbanks area, North Pole. Kathy Giesel, uh, Hillside, and uh, let's see, where is my district now? Uh, East Anchorage. <laughs> Changes. With that, I'd like to open the press conference up for questions. Becky. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Um, for Senator McKinnon, um, I'm, I'm curious um, how you're planning to approach some of these permanent fund bills um, in terms of kind of the things that you think will be important to drill down and focus on in evaluating the best way forward. You have the governor's bill and Senator Stedman's bill on your side, and then there was a, a different approach uh, proposed in the House. Can you kind of talk about what you'll be focusing on, what is going to be important to be evaluating there? Certainly, the Senate last year passed a bill that's similar to what the governor introduced. So we've uh, we have one new uh, senator, Senator Von Imhoff. Uh, she's been following that very closely. So we we know what those components are. Most important is what anything we do uh, affects an individual Alaskan. So we talked uh, two years ago, and it holds true today that we're looking at how the economy is affected, both from a regional perspective, a local perspective, and an individual perspective. So that's how we measure everything, just understanding the effects. Of course, if you're talking about using anything from the earnings of the permanent fund, we want to know how the whole uh, system stays whole, what, what happens to our reserves, what happens to the permanent fund itself, the corpus of the permanent fund itself, and how in perpetuity it can go forward and still continue to roll off funds in a responsible manner. So we'd be looking at the, I think we set a, a fairly optimistic rate of return at 5.25 percent. That wouldn't be the realized uh, rate of earnings, but 5.25 uh, may be a little aggressive, so you might see the Senate uh, reduce that number a bit. James? James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Have any of you had a chance to look at the proposal in the House uh, 115? And what do you think of it? Well, <clears throat> I looked at it this morning. <laughs> I read the article. <clears throat> you know, I think it, it has some merit. Obviously, the, the Senate's approach to the budget has been uh, continued budget reductions, um, looking, at, uh, looking at the PFD quite closely to what we passed last year with possible some modifications. But, um, but I think that uh, in order to get us closer to where we need to be near the end, it would be advantageous for us in the Senate to take a close look at what the House is doing and hopefully the House will take a close look at what we're doing so that we don't come to loggerheads near the end of session and get dug in on one side or the other. So um, my, uh, my advice is to, to take a close look at uh, their legislation. Um, and uh, view that and and see if there is some common ground if not uh, we should uh, proceed accordingly it's uh, we are approaching the 30th day this wednesday in a 90-day session um, we'll be one third of the way through so uh, more cooperation and open-mindedness uh, on both sides would uh, go a long way to getting us to where we need to be austin um, Austin Baird from KTU, um, Senator Hoffman in particular, and anyone else who'd like to weigh in. Do you worry that as the Senate majority and others in the legislature look at spending reductions, especially with a target number of $750 million over the next few years, that that will inevitably lead to talks of big cuts to subsidization of services in rural Alaska? such as the size of schools and other, other things like that? Do you worry there will be an outsize impact? Well, um, I, I don't. Everyone needs to step up to the plate. I think that any reductions that come about uh, need to be looked at um, on an even keel basis and how they affect urban or rural Alaska. Um, uh, schools and edu education, the foundation formula is, is geared toward um, 
uh, treating uh, the districts uh, throughout the state of Alaska equally. So when we, you see reductions to the formula, they are treated equally across the board. Um, we have the, uh, in school construction, we have uh, the uh, um, decree where a certain amount of funds get spent. Uh, the, this, I think, was uh, quite evident to this last year when the governor reduced the, uh, the uh, cut 25% out of the rural school construction and uh, the uh, money for uh, uh, school debt reimbursement equally. So both were treated uh, fairly uh, and both received a hit. So at present time, I, I say, say, would say that maybe uh, we should look at that uh, reduction again and have that considered. Uh, so as long as uh, what goes forward is treated fairly by, uh, by both sides, I don't have any uh, problem in um, everyone participating in addressing the deficit. Steve? Uh, Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. Uh, this question um, stays along the same theme as Austin's with, for Senator Hoffman, but it's still open to anybody. Um, Senator Hoffman, how um, you, you've discussed income taxes before even the bill was rolled out last week. Have you looked at how an income tax might affect your district? Not, not at this point. You know, I, I'm, I'm. Overall, I guess I'm concerned that uh, that while we are we in the Senate have uh, have earmarked uh, reductions to the current program um, uh, by $1,000 uh, in, in general terms, cutting $1,000 and, and keeping $1,000 back on the table. Um, for a family of five, that's uh, $5,000. That's significant. And uh, to turn around and at the same time look at uh, reductions uh, through to income tax um, uh, does cause some concern, but I think the governor is supportive of the proposal of uh, the concept be behind Senate Bill 128. The House seems to see that it, it has some merit, and obviously, the 29th Alaska Senate uh, voted for it. Uh, again, we're the 30th Alaska Senate, and um, individuals may have changed their minds or their positions, but. Uh, the debate is there, and uh, we don't know what the Senate may or may not do until it's voted upon. Liz? Good morning. Liz Rains with KTVA. The Senate majority has shown interest in, in utilizing the earnings and a long-term capacity, but um, has said that it's uh, not for a broad-based tax this year. Um, the House majority, in, in putting out the new bill, had uh, said that they thought by combining the two into one, it would make it easier to pass the Senate. D do you think that's a case? Uh, does it make a difference whether or not they're in one bill or, or separate bills? Liz, uh, I'll, I'll take it first. I think it's uh, two huge policy discussions that should be taken up independent. But uh, should the bill make it to the Senate Finance Committee, we'll review it together. Uh, it's an awful lot for a whole bunch of new uh, representatives to understand the impacts of just restructuring uh, use of the permanent fund earnings. Uh, I mean, you saw last year with people who had been in their seats for at least two years that the discussion could not advance in the House. And so you're throwing two very complex things together. We haven't seen an income tax in this state in 35 years or better. So uh, I, I think they're huge issues. I understand why they're taking them up together, but I, um, I'm cautious. I, I just would say caution, caution. That it's huge policy issues, and that's why we have bills that are, have single subject rules. Any other comments from uh, Nat? Good morning, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Senator Giesel, can you talk a little bit about the rationale behind your uh, studded tire fee increase and sort of what kind of consideration also you've given of the, the impact of a fee increase on like the average Alaskan? Well, thanks for that, Nat. So, so first, your first question was why? And the answer to that is every week I drive the Glen Highway to pick up my six grandchildren and transport them in my vehicle on the Glen Highway between Eagle River and Anchorage. I don't know how many folks have driven that road, but it is deeply rutted. It is incredibly dangerous, not just in the winter, 
but also in the summer on a rainy day when those ruts fill with water. Hydroplaning, uh, difficulty maintaining control, changing lanes in a high speed road that was just paved a few years ago. So in looking at the cause, 15 years ago, Alaska did a study on the cause of the rutting in the roads. And that's what resulted in the 2004 studded tire fee that we've had in statute now for, what, 13 years? Uh, so in looking into what it costs DOT to repair those roads that are so deeply rutted, and, and I just have referred to the Glen Highway, but the other half of my district, of course, is Girdwood, and that's the Seward Highway, also suffering from deep ruts. Uh, it costs about a million dollars a mile to repair that, and that's for a two-lane road. Remember, the Glen is six lanes. So the $5 fee last year brought in about $400,000. That's about enough to reconstruct a half a mile of a two-lane highway once a year, clearly not meeting the need. We've been talking about the fiscal challenges that the state faces. Frankly, our oil revenues are not going to be able to pay for all the services anymore. And so this is an increase in a user fee. Can, can the average Alaskan afford an increase that's that steep? Well, that'll be an interesting discussion that will occur in committee, Nat. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, the question you need to ask is, does the average Alaskan buy studded tires? The data I've heard is, frankly, 12% of, of vehicles in Alaska have studded tires. And, and I believe that that is construed from the amount of fee that's paid. Um, and more of that will be fleshed out. But honestly, um, I think a lot of Alaskans, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of Alaskans have, in the past years, realized that the new technology tires are as good or better in, in our driving conditions. And that information will come out also. There's numerous research studies on that. What, what, what kind of car do you drive and what tires do you use? I use the new technology tires. I live on the hillside. I have a very steep highway, or very steep driveway. And I drive a 16-year-old drive a -old Oldsmobile sedan that's front wheel drive. Questions? Shauna, did you have one? I do. Shauna Crondall, Alaska Education Update, and this is for Senator Giesel, since you're on the Senate Education Committee. Can you talk about um, things the Senate Education Committee is doing, and, and um, do you have any ideas for, for any education action you might want to take this year? Thanks for the question. Um, you know, I really have enjoyed our, our Education Committee hearings. Last week, we heard from two school districts, uh, Copper River School District and Matt Sue. And the thing that struck me in listening to those incredible innovations that those school districts